That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, we write this to make our joy complete. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. Okay, thank you, Terry. A lot of really good stuff in that section. Um, and we are going to pick it apart tonight. That's as much as we're going to read. And you're going to dig like you have never done before because this is an inductive study. That means digging. That means finding the answers. That means um, discovering for yourself what it's talking about. And it's good always to read. I, I had asked you on the, our group to read the whole book of First John. And did anyone get a chance to do that yet? If you haven't, then do it this week sometime. It's a short book, five short chapters. We have our vertical relationship, and then we have a horizontal oh, okay. relationship okay. with one another. We can injure relationships with others. And that usually happens when our relationship with God is is not it's on the rocks. You know? Say you come to Him and you are saved. You are His child. And then let's say you do sin, and you don't. We don't usually do our sinning on purpose. It's just we sin mm -hmm. as much as we don't want to. Hopefully, it's not as much and often and frequently as it was before ten or ten years ago, twenty years ago. But we do sin, and when we sin, and we walk in that, and we've not confessed it, um, we're, our fellowship with him is broken. First, first John 1, 9, don't ever forget it. That's a good one to have memorized. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's made that possible. What a good and gracious God he is to do that for his children. What does it take to have a good relationship with someone? Time. 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 Yeah. Spending time. It's hard to have a relationship with even a friend, a horizontal relationship, if you don't have time together. Husbands and wives. If you don't spend time together, pretty soon you grow apart. Um, you get to know people by spending time with them, and that's how that's how the bonding mm -hmm. occurs. And and it's fellowship is such mm -hmm. a sweet, precious mm -hmm. thing. This is me, and this is you. This is us without Christ, and that's just pe two people, two individual people. But something unusual happens when we grow up here closer to the triune God. Here's God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, As we grow, and we grow by spending time in the Word, and by spending time together with one another. And as we grow, and this is for married couples too, this is what Warren and I do some marriage counseling sometimes on the side. And we tell them that, you know, the closer each one of you gets to the Lord, the closer you get to each other. So as you grow closer to Him in your vertical relationship, guess what happens to this distance right here? It, it closes and you get closer and closer and closer. And it could be a husband, it could be a friend. You know, it's, it's us. It's us right here doing what we're doing. I have goosebumps <laughs> because this is what happens. And then someday we're all going to be together. So keep that picture in your mind uh, as we're thinking and talking about fellowship. Verse 3, what we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father 
and with his son, Jesus Christ. And we proclaim to you, verse 3 says, we proclaim to you so that you too think about what it's saying here. So that we, it's as if John is writing that letter to all of us. So that we also may have fellowship with them, those that are proclaiming it. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 4, these things we write so that our joy may be made complete. So the question I want to ask you is what is the purpose of this letter here? Why is John writing this to us? 